Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Life of the Lost. Our podcast is a subsidiary of Supe Apparel, and today is July 28th, and it's Peruvian Independence Day. So for everybody watching on YouTube, that's why I have my Peruvian jersey on, and we were celebrating earlier with a bunch of our adoptee friends. I'd like to start off this episode first by telling you a little bit of a story. So a few days ago, me and Megan were walking uh, to CVS. We were on our way to get some protein for me because I love uh, having this like cool dessert. Anyways, enough of that. <laughs> we were walking half week. We got maybe a little less than halfway down the block and we noticed two people talking to each other and we didn't really much pay much mind to it in, at first, but one of them couldn't help but say, enjoy the land that you got back. It, yeah, how does it feel to have your land back? Yeah, how does it feel to have your land back? And I didn't really think much into it because I took one look at him and my preconceived notion of him was just kind of, he might be a little off the uh, deep end. I don't know how you'd say it. <laughs> but I think Megan took it a little bit more um, more to heart. We couldn't help but, you know, have a discussion about it after, you know, as we were walking to CVS about perception how people perceive, you know, me and Megan in, in this world and in America. And we thought that it'd be an important topic to talk about. Do you have any kind of uh, experiences off the top of your head, whether it was from, you know, childhood experience or whether it's from a more recent experience that you can just think of that has to do with that? Yeah. So before I go into that, I'm going to go back to your first question or the first story yeah. and talk a little bit about why I felt super, I guess you felt a little bit more nonchalant because you look kind of like a crazy guy. But for me, I took it a lot more to heart because although I think there was another person standing by, when I looked behind me, I didn't see anybody. And I just thought that he was looking directly at us asking how it felt to have our country back. And that was so weird to me because one I mean, it, I'm not a Native American, uh, like I'm Peruvian, you don't know that, you don't know that I'm adopted, you don't know, and this might be controversial, but you don't know that I might feel just as white as you do, you know? So that was yeah. really frustrating for me, and I guess I just have to step back and think why somebody would go out of their way to be mean, you know, to just be rude, to say something like that to somebody you don't even know like why would you go out of your way regardless if i mean i can't speak if he was crazy or not yeah. but i can't just just in general you know and which leads to your next question about being younger and having these experiences as well it's just crazy i guess yeah when when you say that you felt like you were just as white as him what do you mean by that in that sense i think because I was raised with like white parents, so complete white family, um, I went to mostly, I mean, my entire elementary school, I think I can think of three people, four people off the top of my head who were also colored, the rest were white. Uh, junior high wasn't like that, I was very diverse. And high school was more of a white high school. I feel like because I was raised in such a white community, um, had mostly white friends that I can somehow relate to that person. Would you say that you felt like that too, not just because you were raised in a white community, but also because they might have accepted you as maybe like one of their own in a way, and um, maybe feeling like no racism or animosity? Do you think that that played a part? Yeah, I mean, I think just being raised with my family and then their friends were primarily white and nobody really treated me any different i can't remember like family or family huh. friends treating me any different they're just like oh you're megan you're like one of the rakuses like it wasn't any i mean of course there was like questions about adoption but it wasn't like somebody blatantly went out of their way to ask like really rude questions huh well that's 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 definitely interesting because for me and my experiences of even listening to that, I can't help but think, wow, like my perceived notion of maybe living in the suburbs, I, uh, I'd probably get a lot of racist remarks by a whole bunch of white people who don't really know any better and who are just kind of mean. That's my perception, yeah. I guess, because I didn't grow up in the suburbs and I don't know what it's like being as like from the city. I feel like from the media and from people talking, like maybe that's kind of like a perception that I might have gotten because I, I did get i was like you know victim of racism i was a victim of somebody judging me based on my skin and not based on who i am inside mm -hmm. and so i could only help but think 
that it's only worse when you get out of that mm. when you go to more of a white yeah. like area but for you it's it's you have a much different experience which but is, i think it it was only like for family and family friends i see like, but then when you get into junior high and things like that i think that's where i experienced a, a little bit more where I felt really divided from my own kind. You know, there wasn't a lot of like Hispanic, Latino people um, in junior high, but there was a group of girls and they kind of attacked me, verbally attacked me um, when I was walking down the stairs one day, just like bombarding me with questions and like wanting to know why I'm fake and wanting to know why like I have white parents. Just like there's very mean things. And I think those things were just very frustrating. Um, wow. And I guess... Yeah, that was one of, one of the first times. That's wild. So would you say that you could have maybe experienced more racism from your own kind than from even Caucasians? Mm-hmm. Yeah, wow. Yeah, that's primarily when I think of any time that somebody's been really racist to me or said terrible things to me, they've been Latino or Hispanic. That's really interesting, too, because I, I think I can I can relate to that as well. I definitely think from the friends that I have that are white, um, I definitely felt, I think, little to, to zero. Like, I have to even go as bold as say zero racist remarks, any kind of judgment based on uh, my skin color or, or where I look like I came from. Yeah, it was like nothing. It was non-existent. And what's interesting, too, is that I definitely felt that in Hispanic community and the minority community, even as I, I'm older now and I can definitely see it. It's just really interesting. I guess going going a little bit further back, my experience with perception and being judged based on your skin color and not necessarily who you are is, you know, I can remember from a very young age, specifically, I was at a, uh, a restaurant with my family. I remember going to the bathroom. I honestly was about like nine, 10 years old. I was young. And I remember coming back from the bathroom and somebody kind of ushered me over like, you know, um, waved a hand like that. And I went over and they said, you know, I'm, I'm kind of done. Can you clear this plate if, if you don't mind? And I was like, oh, you know, I'm sorry. I, I don't I don't work here. And at and 10 years old. Too, yeah, I guess that's like. Yeah, no, and, and it really took me back. And, you know, they were like, oh, I'm sorry, like, may, maybe it was a black shirt or something. And I'm like, no, no, it's all right. But I didn't pay much mind to it, I guess, you know, what would a 10-year-old do with that kind of, how, how would he digest that? So I definitely, like, later on, it was, I thought about it, because, you know, things like that did happen too, you know, being in um, buildings and somebody asking if I was, you know, doing a delivery, and, you know, that, that definitely did cultivate a animosity if you'd say to to my own kind and am i proud of that no i'm not you know that that thought is very conflicting with me i i, I wrestle with that every day um in terms of my place in this world and and it is sad it is sad because that's how like hate is bred and it's just unfortunate that people they judge before they know even to the slightest bit, you know, it doesn't, you know, I'm not asking you to, you know, sit down and have a conversation with me, be a little more uh, cautious, a little kinder, a little, I don't know, you know. Yeah, I, I, it's, and it's, it's frustrating too, because somebody who's watching this or listening to this um, might think, oh, you know, they've had like maybe one or two experiences, but I don't think people realize like this is kind of a daily thing. You know, the story you first started with literally happened about three days ago. I've been here in New York City for I think coming up three years now and I've had a lot of experiences with racism from my own kind and I think even kind of backing up to being a teenager and like young adulthood that it happens regularly and so that's where it's bred you know that's kind of where hatred or like unkindness or uncomfortableness I guess if that's a word kind of what comes from yeah and I, I'd be curious to anybody who um you know, is watching and, and has any kind of experiences like this too. I mean, you don't necessarily have to be adopted or, or follow in the same footsteps as, as I did, but I'd be definitely curious to see if you ever had experiences like, like me or, or like Megan. I, I definitely love to hear that. Feel free to drop a passage in the comment section of the YouTube or definitely always feel free to uh, send us uh, messages via our social media. You know, we're always active. We're always here to, to, welcome any questions that you might have but with that being said too I, I can't help but also but think of that one time you know when we were waiting for the train 
on 34th Street. This was a little bit more of a, I don't know how do you say it, a little bit more of a, a, a standoffish experience where somebody was deliberately trying to bully. Bully, yeah. This is how it kind of goes. So um, me and Megan, we were on um, 34th Street waiting for the train to go uptown, I believe. The train was about to come. I remember specifically a group of, you know, two older ish guys I'd, I'd like to say around like 26 to 30 and you know they had you know a few younger maybe nieces or, or daughters i'm not sure one of them came up to me and they asked me for directions in spanish and i didn't know what to say because i don't know spanish side note you know it, it does bother me knowing that i i don't know it because i feel like limited i feel like i uh, there's already like a roadblock on me like a hit a ceiling and i can't go any further and you know based on the circumstances of my life uh, you know learning spanish isn't top priority so with that being said i you know i kind of said like i don't understand and they kind of kept on i think asking it one more time and i just kind of said like no habla espanol because that's what like what i've learned you know to say like that's like your backup plan like your defense mechanism in situations where somebody isn't listening to you or doesn't care to kind of hear you out at all yeah you do we're tr i'm trying to relate with you yeah yeah and they kind of looked at me a little funny and they kind of walked away and just said okay and i was like okay like it's a pretty awkward exchange they went back to their uh group of a family or friends everything was fine for like a few seconds until i overheard them you know and and it was really and pointing really, and laughing and yeah and just kind of you know mocking the words I said in a weird manner and I was really shocked I, I honestly didn't know what to say at, at first I, I had no feelings towards it just kind of like are you kind of like are you kidding me like here here we are you know like I'm um, the same color as this person who is is making fun of me and I just don't I just I don't have words for it I just don't understand and, and it really makes me sad I just I just don't I just don't I don't I don't get that and it's kind of like I don't mean to come off any kind of way, but I I can't help but think that in those situations where they think we're joking around with them or something that they think we're trying to be superior to them, you know, in some kind of way, um, we live in a nicer neighborhood. And so it's, you know, it comes off a certain way a lot of the time to people and we're not clueless. We understand we're very blessed to be here. We understand we have a lot of privileges over a lot of minorities um, just based on being adopted. You know, for, for somebody to kind of come at us and to kind of bully us in that way, and then to sit there in the train, I remember on the way home, just the laughing continued, the pointing, and it's just kind of like, I don't understand. Like, I'm not trying to demeanor you. I'm not trying to look down on you. I'm not trying to be anything else than just a, a normal human being. And like you said, just, well, what do you do? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, it it does make me feel like very, very sad, particularly because of of things that are going on, you know, with immigration, with people who are getting bullied because they don't know English, who are trying to fight for their rights to be seen as equals. When then simultaneously, you have these same people who are also feeling very the opposite in a way and you know i i don't mean to rub anyone the wrong way i really don't i, I you know feel free obviously too to to write to to express your your opinions on on the things that i'm saying because i'd love to hear them these thoughts aren't they're not finished by any means um, i'm still sifting through them as we speak i try to live my life as balanced as i can when any kind of conflict arises whether it's a big thing dealing with the national issues um or whether it's something little dealing with you know maybe a conflict between um, me and you um i definitely try to err on the side of of balance and and see both perspectives and try to take myself out of of to take myself out of myself and look at myself looking at myself looking at the conflict as a third person to try and just get a better understanding of the situation so i can respond as logical and as sensible as someone could be and i'm not perfect you know i'm always trying to work on that too but with that said it's just interesting too that you know as much as you have a lot of good you know people and 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 people who have the right intentions and who want to 
see their culture grow and see people being treated fairly and equally, which I'm 100% for. It's just interesting to see that there are also other people, too, on the other side of that, you know, in all cultures, too, who are just very um, racist, too, and not just racist to other people, per se, but my firsthand experience was, you know, they're, they're being racist to, to, to me, and I'm, I'm like your, I'm like your brother. I'm, I'm, you know, like, we're, we're, we're supposed to be in this together, and I just, it just kind of hurts, and, you know, I, I can't help but, you know, relate those those specific Hispanics to anybody in this country who has these kind of negative opinions about other races. You know, one might, you know, call them, I don't know how you'd call them, but just I think you might know what, what I'm talking about. And I'm not quite sure what to make of that. I, all I'm trying to say is that I'm just trying to shed light on my experiences and where I come from and and when I see these um, articles and, and all these things that I see wrong in, in America, specifically towards like the, where I come from. I mean, I have a brother and a sister who both came to this country, you know, um, illegally, and they, they fought their way. I, I, God knows how, I, I haven't talked to them about that. They haven't spoken to me about that, but they are in California right now. And I, you know, I have a personal connection with the with you know immigrants in that sense, uh, my own blood, and it's just it's just interesting. It's to, kind of like to kind of sum it up. I think it's one of those things. It's like, how do you expect me to be loyal when my own kind or feel any sympathy to my own kind when they're constantly bashing me? They're constantly treating me like I'm something else, and I and I also feel like I'm something else because I was raised, you know, with Caucasians and family and friends. So it's like. It's this constant battle where, yes, you're talking a little bit about immigration and people are like, well, um, you should stand this way. You should stand here. You should be this because you're Peruvian. You should understand. And I'm just kind of we're kind of over here, you know, on the other side being like, 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 like understand. But like how, like I said, this is going to come off kind of weird. But how do you expect me to stand with you if you've never stood with me, if you've always beaten me down, if you've always like honestly segregated me from my own kind based on a circumstance and a situation that I had no control over I wasn't a baby sitting there like pick me pick me like I'm better than you you and you like we were chosen for you know for all the great reasons in the world like I'm very grateful but it does it also comes with these negative conflicts and and internal and external problems yeah it's like what do you do when you're when you're raised and honestly every single caucasian that you've interacted with has shown you nothing but love nothing but love and you know down on the other side there is it's a huge mixed bag of of positive but also negative and very negative you know and i i, I don't mean to come off like like that but you know it 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 does make me upset and when you when i see things on the news and when i hear things about the injustices that you know these people are my people are facing because i i wear the same skin color as you and i i identify i can't i can't help but it but i identify i my face just just oozes south american like oozes like peruvian i can't help that so i can't help but feel that um that i am a part of you and you know whether i like it or not i am what do I do when I see these, you know, articles and stuff about the injustices? And then I think about all the times that, you know, somebody made fun of me because I didn't know Spanish. Somebody looked down on me because they thought that I was trying to act better than them, judging me. And I'm not even judging you. I'm simply just trying to explain myself. And then you want, like you said, you want me to sympathize with you. You want me to understand your, your struggle and yet you don't want to understand mine. Like you said, you want my loyalty. Well, I don't know, because cause I feel hurt. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I feel like, you know, it is something to be said to. I also feel like in my life and in how I conduct my life is I like to spread all information. I like to be the advocate for the minority vote, whether, you know, just the majority feels a certain way doesn't mean that the minority shouldn't feel shouldn't feel entitled to feel how they feel if it's a real feeling if it's a true feeling to them like i feel too about my feelings towards the injustices 
to that I felt my with my own personal experiences. And, you know, I'm sorry if it's getting a little too serious. Um, but, you know, it is a serious topic and it is something that is a huge part of me and it's a huge part of our identity. And it is a huge part of this podcast because we are all talking about identity and we are all in the search of finding ourselves. And I just would uh, like to say that. And maybe if anyone has any thoughts on that, um, feel free, like I said, to just write it down. Like, let me, let me know. Like pro like, or like for it and against it. Because yeah. you said this isn't like end all be all. This isn't like my final thought. It, it's and we might be coming across okay, we're we're anti our own kind, and that's yeah. just not true either. No. I think we're just saying we've had really bad experiences, and I mean we could sit here for hours with you and tell you about every single experience. We're just kind of you know pushing this into a, a small time limit of things, but we would love to talk to you about it. You know, if you're completely not understanding understanding this at all or if you are love to hear feedback because you know we do have a lot of hispanic and latino friends and yeah. we love them to death and that doesn't mean that everybody's treated us horribly there's been so many people even just as we started supe and kind of getting back into it that have reached out to us and when they find out we're adopted and just have been really intrigued and like th those are you know our own friends and it's been really nice to see and to feel supported and i guess we're just kind of shedding light on some situations that are a little bit negative that come with being adopted, that come with having brown skin, but maybe feeling more white inside. And we express it um, so it can change. You know, mm -hmm. it can, it can, we can shed light on it just like we're shedding light on a lot of, you know, things that needed have been long overdue to talk about and just, you know, have conversations because I think conversations is the, the first major step to making change and making and having progress and c coming to mutual understanding with uh, another individual, you know, so, so everyone can be happy and everyone can be heard. Maybe with that, uh, we'll say, uh, we'll uh, wrap it up. It's been a pleasure and, uh, we'll see you next time on life of the lost. Take care guys.